Still hitting for nine, so that is a good game. He only sacrificed one of his casts because he only has one oven. Just about do it. In his life, that token up. There it is. Beautiful. So absolute maddening how powerful this deck is. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to check out Hello Good Game. Today we are playing Mono White uh, Aggro. I've dubbed it Eggnog. It's really, really good. This deck has the highest win rate of anything I've played all month. Uh, I am just climbing rank. It's incredible. I think I'm sitting at a 77% win rate. So let's break down the deck. We have four Fairy Guide Mothers. This has a Sorcery Adventure tag to it, which we almost never use. Target creature gets plus two, plus one, and gains flying until end of turn. And then he himself is a one cost creature. That's a one, one with flying. We have four Giant Killers. Destroy target creature with power four or greater. And then he's a one drop creature. That's a one, two. You can pay two, tap him, and then tap target creature. This is really good for getting rid of Rotting Regisaurs, Questing Beasts, Lovestruck Beasts, anything that's a big baddie. We like to wipe off the field with this. That's our removal. We have four Healer Hawks. Flying Lifelink is a one drop for one one. Uh, so a really nice way just to keep that life total up. Hunted Witness. When Hunted Witness dies, create a one one soldier creature token with lifelink. Uh, so this is really good value as well. Lots of times, if I have this in my opening hand, I like to open up with this rather than my Guide Mother or my Giant Killer or even my Enforcer because then he's using his Shock, per se, on the Hunted Witness, which will generate a creature anyways. Whereas if we're playing anything else, he just gets straight removal on us. We have four Law Rune Enforcers. You can pay one, tap it. Tap target creature with converted mana cost two or greater. This is also really great for tapping Rotting Registrar, Questing Beast, anything that's big. That's giving you a problem and if he's got that defender up as well that you can't get past you can go ahead and tap it right is that loyal pegasus this is another one drop it's a two one it has flying and it can't attack or block alone so for that reason a lot of the times i like to get it out on turn one because you're not going to be able to attack turn one you're not going to be able to attack turn two but turn three you get to light off uh, or you just hold it off and uh play it later on in the game but lots of times i just like to get that out of the way Raise the alarm, create two 1-1 one, one white creatures tokens. Uh, this is really good because it's an instant. You can cast that at the end of your opponent's turn. We have Rally of Wings times two. Untap all creatures you control. Creatures you control with flying get plus two, plus two until end of turn. So this is really nice if you've attacked, you're tapped, and now he's going to attack on you and untap, do the special um, shenanigans where you block where he wasn't expecting it and get some of the removal on his creatures. We have four Hanged Executioners. Uh, this is a three drop it's a one one so pretty expensive but when you play it it's going to create another one one flyer and then you can pay four exile it then exile target creature so this is another form of instant removal which is really good because we can leave four mana up say he goes in with the amber cleave and then we just go ahead and exile that creature right we also have four unbreakable formations creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn it has addendum which means if you cast it during your main phase you'll get an additional uh spec to the card and then for this one, it is put a 1-1 one, one counter on each of those creatures. They gain Vigilance until end of turn. So this is one of my favorite plays. I'll use Venerated, or sorry, Unbreakable Formation on everybody. We attack in, because they have Vigilance now, they've not tapped after their attack, and we can Venerate Loxodon on them, which is basically uh, for free, because we've already got that attack, and so we're not even missing our attack phase when we do this. Uh, and then, of course, Venerated Loxodon times 4. It's got Convoke, it costs 5, it's 4-4, four, four. When it enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature that it convoked, uh, that, or that convoked it. So like I said, this is really good. Go ahead, do that big attack with your Unbreakable Formation, and then on your second step, or your second main phase, go ahead and invoke all your creatures that had Vigilance from Unbreakable Formation, and that's the best way to do that, I've determined. We also have a Castle Ardenvale. Castle Ardenvale comes in tapped. Unless you control planes, you can a 4 and tap it to create a 1-1. One, one. Uh, human token which is great and then 17 planes so only 18 lands total which is not a lot you guys that is very few lands normally you're on 24 but if you look up top at our mana curve here it is very low we are 100 almost one drops 
and then we've got a little bit of two and a little bit of three and then that one five drop which is venerated loxodon which we're never dropping for five anyways we're always going to be dropping that for one to two because we're convoking our creatures so with that all being said uh, i hope you enjoyed this deck tech be sure to subscribe to the youtube channel for more decks like this if you're interested in free to play budget content we do have a link below it's going to take you to a playlist filled with that kind of content um, you can go ahead and subscribe down below as well to win 500,000 gems. Check out our Twitch if you want to subscribe there to win a Samsung Chromebook. And then be sure to jump in the Discord if you're interested in taking part in tournaments. Right now we're holding the Eggnog Bowl, giving away a Theros Mastery Pass to the winner of that. So thank you guys so much for watching. Glad you found us, and I hope to see you guys again soon. All right, hope to demonstrate today the unreasonable power of this mono white deck is absolutely venerated Loxodon, just as good as it was uh, a couple rotations ago when we I think championship of three, I believe. Just ruining white deck. <clears throat> a couple things have changed. Obviously, we have Fairy Guide Mother as an addition, but uh, a few things do remain the same. We have unbreakable formation. Uh, so my favorite play is I use unbreakable formation attack, and then after I've attacked because of vigilance, I go ahead and use my venerated Loxodon. Bro. Hunted Witness can trade with him. Good. I really need to get rid of that Hushbringer. Is what it is. We're just trying to get our flyers out so we can use our rally of wings. Let's try to force block. We do get it. Also, our rally wings out. Try to get the kill. We do get it. Our creatures play our guide mother. Now we're gonna make our lovely Loxodon. Hopefully that's enough. Obviously, uh, a couple sweepers could get us. The spark could be worse. As long as he doesn't wipe the whole field, right? Actually, could not be better. Perfect. Rally wings. It's like he can see our hand somehow. All right, first match went absolutely perfect. Fusion was flawless. Second match, I'm expecting a similar result. Two unbreakable formations. Really good or uh, really bad. Cauldron familiar. That's brutal. And immediately into a witch's oven. What fun time we're having. Max 
ending our turn. We'll raise the alarm on his turn. And then hopefully play our hang on our turn. And then we're into breakable formations. Healer Hawk. Setting our stop at the end of his turn. Bloodthirsty Aerialist is going to be uh, beyond problematic for us. Let's raise the alarm. He forgot to sacrifice his cat, which is fine. Their hawk. Locks it on. If we can pull a land, it's going to be a lot better. We're going a little bit off script here by using our Loxodon before Hanged Executioner, but unfortunately with two land, uh, we're lucky to be able to play a creature card worth five. Ah, uh, he does take our own Loxodon. Oh, very nice. Doesn't attack with the cat, which is... <laughs> Fine, I guess. Still at 21, so we're going to go as wide as we possibly can. Leaving our Hanged Executioner at 1, because we might be using it to exile his Bloodthirst Aerialist later on. We're better off just to buff everybody else. On quite wide, unless he can pull a Sweeper. 3. Hey, GG's. Ritual of Suit gets everything but the Loxodon. No blocks we're gonna allow. Have this. Down to 12. Hmm, Knight of the Heaven Legion. I'm gonna get a counter. Wow. First formation. Seven attackers are in. Oven is untapped, so he can chump block, locks it on with the cat. Taking seven, eight, nine confirmed. Oh no, more than, more than that. No, no, that's correct. And then uh, probably closer to thirteen, I think. We're killing. Uh, the Knight of the Evan Legion first, obviously. He does gain quite a bit of life. But again, unless he pulls that sweeper, uh, the second unbreakable formation is just going. Okay. I always thought that this should be in an Azorus deck because it's got the symbol on the shields. Notice that's really cool. Oh, he wipes our Healer Hawk. Good for him. He'll have... Oh no, the cats will save him. No blocks. We're going to let him have it. Oh my god. Can't believe we pulled the third one. They 
If that's not game, he's definitely dead next turn. We'll block his Bloodthirsty Aerialist next turn, obviously, so we don't die. Still hitting for 9, so that is a good game. He only sacrificed one of his casts because he only has one oven. Just about do it. Any his life. That token up. There it is. Beautiful. So absolute maddening how powerful this deck is. Alright. We're going 2-0. Oh, just obliterating our opponents. Let's see if we can do 3. And then maybe even 4 if it goes quickly enough. Do you plan on hitting Mythic today or tomorrow with this deck? Um, we've been playing a lot of different decks recently trying to settle in. On something that we enjoy and uh, so far this is feeling the best obviously we're still running from sweepers definitely Clarion destroys us so it... we will offer to trade with his edge wall inky oh he's not gonna do it And then we raise the alarm on his turn. Paying life for Lucky Clue. Now we can basically just empty our entire hand here. It's pretty dang silly if you ask me. creatures there putting some counters on them so just sprinting and repeating and that's it that's three just a nice quick one like we wanted let's go ahead and go four in a row all right one more match of the day it looks pretty good maybe a little high on lands but uh we're gonna see if we can get it done just the same game plan as always throw in spaz out we're playing jessica fires gets to scry three here Looking for Fires of Invention. He has Deafening Clarion, etc., which is going to be really hard for us to get around. Try to. Not good. Hopefully, we can just uh, unleash on him before he gets there. We're looking for a Loxodon. If he uses a sweeper on us next turn, scoop. If not, we might win. There's the planes. Here's Deafening Clan. No Deafening Clan on Leaking War Boss. That's incredibly interesting. We're able to get. Go for it. Losing his Legion War Boss here. Uh, and our Hunted Witness survives. That's not bad. Down to eight. We have a Sweeper. He has a Sweeper. We're in a similar situation. Really, really bad. But if not, say this is game. This is Fires of Invention. Second spell. It's the Sphinx of Foresight. This looks really good for us. Uh, two, four, six, eight. Can absolutely do it. We're going to tap his Sphinx. Play our Healer Hawk, which we don't need to do. And we're all in for eight. Yes! Beautiful, beautiful quick wins here today. So that was Mono White Eggnog. Um, an absolutely incredibly powerful aggro deck right now. Uh, I'm just climbing up the rank in Diamond with it. I really recommend uh, this to anybody who's looking to use it to climb rank as well. Just because it's so reliable. 
You only need one to two lands. If you get three, you're popping off and uh, you just go super wide. The only thing that's really beating you is the sweepers, definitely Clarion, uh, Cry of the Carnarium, things like this. That's just going to wipe your whole field. Chandra's minus three comes to mind as well. But hopefully you can get in, get the kill before they realize what's happening to them and uh, just keep climbing that ladder. Uh, this deck has the highest win rate of anything I've used this month by far. So I'm really looking forward to abusing that. With all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel to be entered in to win up to half a million gems. Subscribe to our Twitch channel to be entered in to win a Samsung Chromebook. And then be sure to jump in our Discord as well if you're looking to do uh, tournaments because we are in the middle of our first annual Eggnog Bowl. This is a brawl tournament we're going to do every holiday season. And uh, yeah, it's really good turnout so far, really good results. People are really enjoying it. And uh, we're enjoying hosting it for you guys. And we're giving away a Theros Beyond Death Mastery Pass for the winner there. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to check us out. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you all tomorrow.